Life Audio. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today I want to remind you that we're doing a short series called Family Favorites, where now through the holidays, we are going to be rerunning some of the favorite podcast episodes that we've had throughout the last year. Some of you are joining us rather recently with the Psalm series, so you may have missed some of these other series and and episodes. And for others of you, I know that I've heard from some of you that you're a little bit behind on the Psalm study. So this will give you a little bit of time to catch up. We are going to pick back up with the Psalm study in January. Thank you so much for those of you that are continuing to study along with us. I just want to say how thankful I am for you and Merry Christmas. After a quick word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's episode together. Stay tuned. The exchange of opinions is essential to democracy. But today, many Americans hold radically different views, not just of politics, but of reality itself. Unity Talks, the new podcast from Vanderbilt University's Project on Unity and American Democracy, seeks to reintroduce evidence to the national discourse through conversations with experts on the important issues facing our nation. Co-hosted by John Meacham, Bill Haslam, and Summer Ali. Unity Talks is available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com. One of the difficult things about pursuing spiritual disciplines is that it is opposite of our nature. We have something, what I used to call a Burger King culture, We now I call it a TikTok culture. We have this desire to have things our way right away. That's why I would say it was Burger King. Um, But this right now culture. And I think the pandemic did contribute to that. But the spiritual disciplines are slow. It's something that develops slowly. And one of my professors in seminary would say, spiritual growth is the slowest process on earth. However, it is definitely worth the commitment of time and effort that it takes because it's developing this relationship with God. So we're going to talk and unpack this a little bit today on the podcast. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, and today is day five of the Intro to Spiritual Discipline series. We are starting a new series that is all about the different various spiritual disciplines, but this week has just been a week to kind of discuss why the spiritual disciplines are important and why we should pursue them in our lives. And so we're going to start off today by reading through Romans chapter 5. And today I'm reading from the Passion Translation. This is a slightly newer translation. I love it, especially when we're, I'm talking to newer believers or I'm trying to talk through a point um, because there is so much richness in uh, the emotion behind the intention of, of the word. So Romans chapter 5. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. 
But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character. And proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. For when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. Now, would anyone dare to die for the sake of a wicked person? We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a truly noble person, but Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. So if while we were still enemies, God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son, then something greater than friendship is ours. Now that we are at peace with God, and because we share in his resurrection life, how much more will we be rescued from sin's dominion? And even more than that, we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to God, all because of Jesus Christ. When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience, and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all our humanity, because all have sinned. Sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law, but it was not charged against them where no law existed. Yet death reigned as king from Adam to Moses, even though they hadn't broken a command the way Adam had. The first man, Adam, was a picture of the Messiah who was to come. Now there is no comparison between Adam's transgression and the gracious gift that we experience, for the magnitude of the gift far outweighs the crime. It's true that many died because of one man's transgression, but how much greater will God's grace and his gracious gift of acceptance overflow to many because of what one man, Jesus, the Messiah, did for us? And this free-flowing gift imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one who sinned. For because of one transgression, we are all facing a death sentence with a verdict of guilty. But this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into the perfect righteousness of God, acquitted with the words, not guilty. Death once held us in its grip, and by the blunder of one man, death reigned as king over humanity. But now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace and continue reigning as kings in life, enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah? In other words, just as condemnation came upon all through the one transgression, so through one righteous act of Jesus' sacrifice, the perfect righteousness that makes us right with God and leads us to a victorious life is now available to all. One man's disobedience opened the door for all humanity to become sinners. So also one man's obedience opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. So then the law was introduced into God's plan to bring the reality of human sinfulness out of hiding and yet wherever sin increased there was more than enough of God's grace to triumph all the more and just as sin reigned through death so also this sin conquering grace will reign as king through righteousness imparting eternal life through Jesus our Lord and Messiah man I love that passage and I especially love this translation of this passage it talks about this gift of righteousness you know when I mentioned the uh, like the Burger King culture, we want it right our way right away, or the TikTok culture where um, you know the best content has to be done within the first couple of seconds, or people just keep scrolling by. You you can't even have thirty seconds um, because people have lost their ability to hold on to something um, past just a couple of seconds. We have created this dependency on an instant needy culture. I think there are going to be long-term consequences to that. Certainly when it comes to long-term planning or goals, that has been um, a barrier, I feel like. And, you know, honestly, 
don't get me wrong during the pandemic especially i got addicted to clean talk and i learned if you if you don't know clean talk is like all the ways to clean all the gross things in your house i learned a lot about how to clean things and how i wasn't adequately cleaning my house and so i learned a lot myself but the danger in that is that we don't learn the tenacity that comes from these deep relationships. And so, you know, everybody sings that ocean song. They want to sing about going deeper, but they really don't want to go deep. Um, and so what we saw during the pandemic was so many of the churches, there was no depth because they ended up closing their doors. When, when things got difficult, they could not sustain. And one of the things I, I think is really important that we have to understand headed into this spiritual discipline series is that our spiritual maturity is not dependent on a church. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue discussing the rest of this episode together. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. We hope to better equip you to be salt and light for your community. Uh, we hope that we can help you to go out and be a reflection of Jesus Christ to those around you, uh, to your friends and your family, and to, especially to those that do not know Christ. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Our spiritual maturity is not dependent on a pastor or a worship band or a Bible study even. Our spiritual maturity is dependent on our own relationship with God. And our core relationship with God is not dependent on anybody else. It's dependent on our own ability to take the primary responsibility of pursuing a relationship with God that is intentional and learning how to hear and respond to God as he pursues us. One of the things I want to make sure that we cover is, is that the spiritual disciplines, as we go ahead and we start learning about all the different things that we can do to produce a posture in us that is ready to hear from God, is that it is not a list of things that you have to do for salvation or anything like that. Um, and I, I say that because depending on your background, sometimes in some churches, there is this sense that if you do or not do certain things, there's an element of guilt that comes with that. I, that's not what this is. This is simply a guide that will help you learn how to promote behaviors in your life that will lead to greater spiritual maturity and spiritual health. And it's kind of like... Um, you know, eating fast food versus home cooked meals. If you're eating fast food all of the time, you're going to feel different. There's a consequence. You're going to feel different. It's going to affect your health differently than if you're eating a lot of produce or, you know, lower sodium or, or whatever it is. And um, much like eating healthy, there are spiritual habits that produce a healthiness in us that we don't otherwise get. And so it's not a sin, it's definitely not a sin to not pursue these disciplines, but there will be a consequence. Consequences can be good or bad, but the consequence of pursuing spiritual disciplines is a closer relationship with God, a more mature spiritual relationship. And so when we're pursuing God, the goal is to become more like God in his nature. That process is called sanctification. And so that process, I want to make that really clear, that process is God's work. It's not our work. Ultimately, we are powerless to change on our own. It's God's nature in us that allows us to change. So even if we try to do it on our own, Romans 5.17, I read it earlier, it specifically calls righteousness a gift from God. And in fact, Paul mentions 35 times in the New Testament that righteousness is a gift from God. Human striving doesn't work. We talked about that earlier this week, that you are not loved for what you do. You are loved for who you are. Human striving doesn't work. But that doesn't mean that we do nothing. It doesn't mean that we keep on sinning, waiting for God to change us. Instead, it places us in a posture of being able to be changed. One example that I think is helpful is I always talk about this posture of readiness. My daughters play volleyball. And... It's, it's inevitable. There are some girls that are 
you know, on the court and they're playing with their hair or they're talking to each other or they're looking at their boyfriend and they're not really paying attention to the game. And then there are other girls that are crouched down, their eyes are on the, op- the opponents, and they have their hands in position and they're ready and waiting for the ball. And now a lot of times the difference is maturity. The difference is the newer kids on the team that maybe this is their first or second year playing versus the kids that have been playing three, four years and it's experience. They know to be in a posture to be ready to receive what's coming for them. That's the picture that I want you to have in your mind when it comes to the spiritual disciplines. This is just an opportunity for us to dig a little bit deeper. Um, Right now, this whole week, and I apologize for this, but there are farmers out in the field ahead of me that are doing some work in their fields. Um, up around me or, and below me, there's an apple field, there's a corn field, and then there's a wheat field behind me. Um, we kind of live in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Um, but I see such a clear picture of this in the farmers that live around me. Because ultimately, the farmers are helpless to grow say corn, the farmer is helpless to grow corn on his own. But there's things he can do to get ready. And so it's not him just sitting out there praying and saying, okay, God, make corn grow in, in my field. No, he has to get the field ready. He has to cultivate the ground in the spring. He has to plant the seed. He has to prepare the ground maybe with fertilizer. The preparation and the cultivation is the responsibility of the farmer. Then, of course, yes, he has to wait for rain, and obviously we need sunshine, but God grows the corn. The growth is God's responsibility. But the disciplines are the way that we can cultivate and prepare our hearts. The disciplines themselves, the act themselves, are not what changes you. They bring you to a place where God can change you. And so it's the posture of the heart that is ready to receive. It is setting us up to be available to God's presence because it's God's presence that changes us. Father God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you even now as you are drawing my friends closer to you. You are preparing our hearts for what it is that you have for us over these next couple weeks. Lord God, I thank you for the examples we see in scripture, for the example of the heroes of faith that pursued relationship with you. God, I pray as we dig in, that you would reveal yourself, perhaps in a new way, a new way that my friends have never even experienced you in before. God, I pray that you give them the strength to be obedient. And this weekend, as they are praying over this next season, I pray that you would intervene in their thoughts, in their behaviors, in their actions, and you would make yourself known to them in a very real way. God, I thank you that it does not matter what day or time that they are listening to this podcast series, but you transcend day and time and podcast airwaves, God, to work in the hearts of my friends. Lord, I'm so thankful for you and the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Hey friend, do you feel like you need a little one-on-one? My goal for the She Hears Ministry, the Hearing Jesus podcast, all the resources that we have is to really help you learn how to hear God's voice so that you can be confident in your relationship with him. And if you're struggling to learn how to identify or even overcome the barriers that you have in your life to growth, I want to be able to walk through that with you. Did you know that I'm a Christian life coach? Maybe you're struggling with something and you need some objective biblical insight or opinions, or maybe you need to work through something that feels just a little bit too heavy to do on your own. I would love to walk through that with you and land on some practical ways to achieve that goal. And so I have some limited coaching opportunities. If you go to shehears.org, there's a section where you can schedule some one-on-one time with me. I have Mondays and Fridays open right now going into the new year. So I pray that if that is something that you need, that you've been praying about that it would be an opportunity for you to take advantage of some one-on-one time with me. And again, my heart is really to help you lean into whatever it is that God is calling you to do. I pray that that's a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more.
Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. The exchange of opinions is essential to democracy. But today, many Americans hold radically different views, not just of politics, but of reality itself. Unity Talks, the new podcast from Vanderbilt University's Project on Unity and American Democracy, seeks to reintroduce evidence to the national discourse through conversations with experts on the important issues facing our nation. Co-hosted by John Meacham, Bill Haslam, and Summer Ali. Unity Talks is available wherever you get your podcasts.